go. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. And, you know, it's been just a little bit since we have done a give back program. This is the Breakthrough Business Mastery Give Back. And I, I am so stoked because I have got one what I consider, and at least from my standpoint, one of my very, very dearest friends, Lavonna Ross, with me today. And she has a program that is just phenomenal. But welcome, Lavonna. Hey, Gary, thank you so much. Hey, everybody, good to see you. Although I can't see you, but you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like that vicarious people peeking in the window. And uh, so, you know, this is going to be a little bit different as far as a program because Lavana has a background in education. And uh, so real quick, Lavana, tell everybody about, you know, a little bit about your background and, you know, who you are. All right. Well, hey, I am honored and thank you, Gary, so much for having me on here. And I started out in education. You know, first it was I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I knew I loved sign language and wanted to learn sign language. And so when I pulled the university catalog and I looked up sign language, it said, oh, you could do it, but you had to go into education. And voila, there I was. But I will tell you, everything turned around for me. So I became a teacher and I have three degrees in education. And I was on this path of becoming an administrator in schools when I had an opportunity to step out. And I took it and it led to sales for the state of Florida for a university, which then led to business development manager of the Southeast for them, which led to some other companies. And eventually I said, you know what, if you all can do this, I can do it too. And I had no idea what that meant to own your own business, but here we are 12 years later and Ignite Your Shine is my primary business of what I do. But then I also work with corporations on Ignite Your Shine, but also it's called Brain Powered presentation skills. So we take the, the whole basis of everything I do is about how the brain learns. You know, it's always fascinating because, you know, everyone that has been following me for a while, they know that I'm about mindset. And it is about really refocusing or what I call rebooting the brain. And your shine framework is really, really unique. So let's, you know, maybe just dive into that a little bit and let everybody know what that truly is. Sure. You know, so you know how when you get deep in the weeds, Gary, it's, it's so hard when people say, well, tell me what you do or tell me what it's about. It's like you want to word vomit everything to them because everything seems so important. And I was at a conference, a summit about a year ago when we all could go to summits <laughs> safely. And I had um, a lady, I said to her, a friend of mine, I said, you know, I don't even know how to explain what it is that I do. I'm too deep in the weeds. And she goes, uh, you sell confidence. That's what you do. And I went, that's exactly what we do. And so the shine framework though, takes everyone through that. So the S and shine is all about self. So we look at what are your strengths, gifts, skills, talents, what are your mindset around that? Making mistakes are okay because they're gonna happen, you're human. And so we go through this whole component of really taking care of you as well under S. So S is a really heavy one. Then we get into H, H is heart. And it's all about passion. So no matter what you choose, if you're an entrepreneur, for example, and you're choosing something, I also train consult, um, educators who want to become an educational consultant. I now offer a course for them and, I, and a whole membership site for them. And so that's one of the things I tell them is that it's so important, no matter whether you're an entrepreneur or whatever role you have, but it's not just about finding your strengths, gifts, skills, and talents, but that passion too. And it's the two together. You know, because I think about it, if you have your strengths, right, and you have, but you're not very passionate about it. Like if you said to me, Lavana, you're so great at organizing, you should go into people's homes and organize their closets for a living, right? Mer pre Marie Kondo. For me, okay, sounds great. It's a strength, not a passion. So over time, I'm going to get burnt out. We could flip it, right? So I could say, okay, my passion is I love to sing, for example. I love to sing. As a matter of fact, at home, my husband will start singing. And I automatically jump in. I don't even know I do it. I just jump in and he'll stop and look at me and go, it's not a duet. <laughs> so the reason he says that is because it's not my strength, right? It's my passion. But I have this vision of singing every night on the stage in Vegas with Mariah Carey. It's not going to likely happen because it's not my strength, you know? So we talk about the two together. We talk about it personally, and professionally. And then we get to I and I is inspire because you have this beautiful package over here. But if you don't know how to inspire yourself and others when curveballs come and life throws you things that you never thought would happen, such as a pandemic, <laughs> what is it that you're going to do with it? And even much smaller things that happen in your life to bigger things. So how do you stay inspired and how do you inspire others? 
And then the N is navigate. So we have self, heart, right? Then we have inspired, navigate. Navigate is what are you gonna do with all the greatness that I just described? So what do you do with your strengths and your passions and your inspiration? You have all this greatness about you. We call it you a lion of greatness. So as a lion of greatness, what do you do with all of that? So that's navigate your story, your journey, your goals. And then when we get to E is exceptional because you're becoming an exceptional person. You were meant to be not anybody else who you were meant to be. And that's why it's ignite your shine. Wow. I, I mean, that is, you know, one of the most complete synopsis of really what a lot of us do that I've ever heard. And I know that you've been working on this for a while. You even have a little bracelet that uh, I don't know if it's a graduation gift that you give to educators, but it's an anchor reminder about shine. And it's not just a, a it, to me, it's not a, just a concept, but it's a lifestyle. Okay. And when you incorporate that, then you're going to be able to get the results. What, what brought you to to the shine concept. Normally there is like a pivot point, there's something that happens or was it just a, a ongoing process that, you know, it was that logical next step? Yes, so there's several factors that played into it and usually there, there are anywhere from when I was in school, I was in, you know, in elementary, I rocked it out. Like I loved it. I loved elementary, got to middle school, Eh, things started to not shape up as good. And then I got into high school. Like Gary, we moved a couple of years ago and I found my old report card and I have D's and F's on there. And my grades were just declining. And when I got into college, I actually had my first semester, I had an outstanding GPA of a 1.2. <laughs> yeah, they didn't think it was outstanding really either. Like. Right, I know. It's amazing how many of us there are, yet we don't let life stop us. You know, we don't let those things stop us. So you know, I was put on probation to be kicked out of college. And because of that, that's when I went, okay, what is it that I want to do? And I, that's when I knew I wanted to learn sign language. And that's how I ended up, like I said earlier, in education. And I really found my passion. I mean, my GPA did a complete flip. You know, I, I was motivated to study. I wanted to learn. I, I couldn't, I just, I really found that passionate piece about it. So knowing my background and having taught students like me who were challenged with school or hated school, given up on school, thought they were dumb or stupid, that was a key factor. And then my daughter comes along and Gary, you know, my daughter, she has had a lot of the challenges that I had. And then had some instances in school that should never happen to, let alone a child, let alone a human. And unfortunately, it was, you know, a teacher who should not be teaching, in my opinion, but it's a whole other story. So that was a big piece of it. But then the other part, too, is that I love how the brain learns. And so all of my eight books for educators are on how the brain learns and how to engage students in the classroom through that lens. But what was happening is that when I worked with schools as a consultant, I wasn't seeing the shift that I should, like, I should see. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? And it finally hit me that if the brain is not in a state of learning, it's not going to learn. And so now in schools, it's called SEL, social and emotional learning. But for me, I thought, I didn't know there was a term because it, it's more popular now. But I knew that we could shift students. And if we got them to feel confident, now they're more likely to remember. You know, they're more likely to engage. They're more likely to make mistakes and not, you know, say, forget it, never mind. I'm stupid. I'm dumb. And I, all of that, such a passion for me that it all just came together. And the word was originally smart. It wasn't shine. It was smart because I was going after what you identify as smart in education. And someone said to me, right or wrong, someone said to me one time, they said, Lavana, you will never change the definition of smart in education. Well, Gary, you know, part of my personality. So part of me went, watch me, right? And then the other part went, okay, but what if you're right? What if they're right? Like, what do I do? So I actually took a step back and I'm grateful to that person, which not all, we, all the time do we take it in that moment, that gratitude, but I'm grateful because I thought, okay, it's not just about smartness. It's how do you, and the word shine popped in my head and I knew exactly what the letters were going to stand for. And Gary, you mentioned our bracelet and I, I, I will share, I actually, I always have it on but it was made, it's made out of a bicycle spoke, so it, it will never rust. It's handmade by a gentleman, Brian, out of Dallas, Texas. And he makes every single one of these, bending the spoke into the shape of a light bulb. And then he wraps it five times. So right here, the bottom of the light bulb is S-H-I-N-E. But what I never imagined is the meaning that people attach to it that we now share with everybody. So the way my bracelet is right now, for example, you all are seeing the light bulb. But if I turn and look at it, I don't know if I can get to this, it's actually upside down to me. But that's because I don't need it. Uh, hello, I'm with you, Gary. So I don't need that shine. So I have it shining towards everybody else to help them. But in those days, or as we teach, moments 
I literally, you pop it off. You literally have to take it off. You turn it around, you put it back on. And this time the light bulb is facing me. So when we have those moments, not those days, don't write off the entire day, those moments, it's now upside down to you, but it's right side up to me because I'm helping. There we go. Helping. There we go. <laughs> helping me shine. You know, you know, that is so cool because uh, one of the principles that I have been teaching for a long time is that to be successful, it's 80% emotional and psychological. And really what I'm hearing is that your process allows people in the moment to be able to reattach to who they genuinely are. And that competition, I mean, in, in fact, my father told me I was a dumb fat Barnes forever, but it wasn't because he was mean. Don't, don't think my dad was bad, but he was thought he was protecting me. I had teachers that told me not to laugh, you know? <clears throat> so I, I lost my voice for a number of years. And what I have watched you do with the Shine program, and I know that it's really designed for educators, but for me is that in the business community, we're all learning, we're all revamping ourselves, we're all uncovering the things that stop us from actually achieving the things that we know that we desire, we know that we probably have that ability, but there's something in that block and the SHINE program, to me, really answers that bridge between where somebody is, what the block is, and gets over it or through it or under it, and gets to the actualization of actually being able to acquire and having the permission. Maybe that's the word that, you know, it's always amazing to me when I give somebody, quote, permission that I don't think they need, mm -hmm. but they do, because we've been taught, I, I mean, in school, I was one of those kids that was always talking, go figure. And I was told, shut up, sit down. You have to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. You have to raise your hand to talk. And so we've been taught to get permission to be who we are. And am I right? Is that that's really part of the essence of the SHINE program, the framework, is really that light switch, that, that energy connection that just illuminates who they are, what they are, and what they can be if they choose to be. Absolutely. And that's why the E is exceptional because it is, it's about being you. You know, it's exhausting trying to be everybody else. It's exhausting trying to keep up with everybody else. It's exhausting to try to be a perfectionist, which, you know, I'm a recovering perfectionist because that's exactly where I was, you know, and I still, there's times I remind myself and go, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? And as a matter of fact, people can't relate to perfect. And so it, it's been an, an amazing journey, lots of mistakes, lots of learning processes. But what I've learned to do is embrace it as the journey. I mean, put you this way, I am an educator at heart. I've been an educator pretty much my whole life. There's you know a few jobs that I have done where I've learned some of the things, but I don't have any business background. So everything I've done, I've learned, and there've been lots of mistakes doing it. But at the same time, I had to let go of that and say, you know what, what, did you, what can you learn from this? Okay, that didn't work, so what could work? Who can I talk to that could give me some direction or advice or say, oh yeah, I did that and here's what didn't work or I did that, here's what does work. And really creating that network and that support because it can be a lonely world. So all I know is that if I can figure this out without having a business background, anyone can. <laughs> so it's possible. Yeah, you know, what's uh, really exciting for me is I was one of those kids that teachers forgot. You know, most people, if you ask them what their favorite teacher was in, in school, they have one. Yeah. I don't. I have the teachers that really didn't give me the additional, or they gave me the additional negative. And what I'm really feeling like is you have that revolutionary, that, that, that piece of the puzzle, if you will, mm -hmm. that allows educators to not only teach a subject, but embrace a subject, but embrace the student along with the subject. Yes. And to me, that is the missing link because I never liked school because, it, you know, I was just one of those kids that just basically got through and I graduated early because I didn't enjoy it. I, <laughs> I'm out of here. And, you know, the, the hope that if we don't have this connection to learning and understanding we're going to have a citizenry. Is that the right word? That you know, I'm with it. Yeah, you you ask them where <laughs> Washington D.C. is, and they won't know, or who's buried in Grant's tomb, and they have no idea. Uh, 
and so it's really, you know, it, it makes me hopeful because there are individuals like you that are willing to go out and go against the grain. I, I remember when you first started, it, it was a little bit of a, who are you and why are you rocking the boat a little bit? And, you know, it's worked for a hundred years. So why, why do we need to change? Mm -hmm. And so th this is, you know, it, you know me, I, you know, we've known each other and I just have appreciated the things you have done. And we've actually spoken on the same stages together. Yes, we have. So, so would we do this? Let's switch a little bit. I'm going to throw something at you. What do you think, what would you suggest? Because our audience, my audience is mainly business owners, entrepreneurs, sales professionals, mm -hmm. uh, coaches, the, you know, the people in the, the helping arena, but they have products and services. Look, looking at the Shine framework, what would be three suggestions that you would give the audience today as an action step? What, what would you think would be things that they could implement out of the principles of what you teach that would give them a benefit in their businesses? So, and I love that you brought that up because even though I primarily work with educators, you know, in the education system, it's, I still work with corporations too. You know, it's, it's the Ignite Your Shine model, uh, the framework really goes across any platform, any person. It just happens to be where majority of my background is. But I would say it's, it's helped me personally, you know, when it comes to owning a business and running businesses that one of the things is going back to the shine framework is making sure that you identify your strengths. So I'll give you an example. My team, I have six people on my team now. And one of the things I've said to them over and over is I want you in where your strengths are. And the second part is I also want where your passions are. So it doesn't mean everything you do in your role that you're going to love, because that's not going to be true for anybody, but I want the majority of it. And if there's something that really drains you, you know, takes the energy away from you, I want you to tell me, because what if there's a team member or I can get a team member who says, holy cow, bring it on, let me have it. Because then let's give that to them, you know? So I want everybody saying, and I think that is true no matter what role you're in, you know, corporations, I'm not, I'm not someone who believes in necessarily departments, I understand why they're there. But I recently heard this week, actually, that there's some shifts in companies now with everything happening that they're looking at tearing down some of those walls, which excites me because again, you want to be where you sit. And that's the beauty of having team members is some of the things that I hate doing, they love and they rock at it. So I'm like, awesome here you go, because I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> you know, and it's so it's, it's times where I'm literally like, la, 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 no details, no details. I don't want anything. I just, I, I have the framework and the idea of it, but I think that's, you know, one that really that's kind of two things there, but really finding your strengths and identifying your, your passions where they cross, making sure that what you do, that majority of it is that. And so even if you work for a company or you own your own business, how can you set that up to possibly be doing more of your strengths and passions? passions than the things that actually drain you. The second thing is, is self-care. I mentioned that under S for self, really taking care of you. Uh, it's something that I talked about and I knew the value, but I didn't practice it. And I know it's a shocker, um, but you know, a lot of times we're very good at giving advice, not necessarily always taking it. And so I will say during the pandemic, that is one of the biggest things I've been doing. I've, I actually take the time to meditate. I make sure I work out six out of seven days, whether it's a long walk or whether I go to the gym. And so to me, it's just the core, like I just feel the sense of relief. And all I kept thinking was I don't have time, especially in a pandemic, I'm pivoting. There's no way we have so much to build, so much to do. Yeah, you, you have to take that time. And then the third thing is, is that I think we have to caution ourselves on comparison. I think comparison can be good in a driving force, but it can also be a very high negative. You know, for example, comparing, well, that person's doing this and I'm not doing that. And that person is doing this and I have no idea how to do that. And I should be doing this. And they have a podcast where they wrote their 20th book and they, and we start comparing. And I think of it like mirrors, right? And so we reflect back on us, but what we have to remember is those people, one, are not where we are, two, not coming from our story, and three, I may not even want any of that. You may not want any of that. Like when I work with my consultants, I'm training, they're like, okay, I got to write a book, don't I? I have to, I know you're going to tell me I have to write a book. And I'm like, this is your business. If you don't want to write a book, don't write a book. Like it's your life, it's your business. So I think watching the comparisons, what everybody else does, and not one of them again has all of it. So choose what you want. What do you want this to look like and embrace that and make that work for you? 
you know, that last part of it is so important. I, I, one of my Garyisms is life is a solo journey traveled with many. And I learned many years ago that I, I'm a very competitive person. I know you are too. And but I learned to only compete with me so I can always win. Mm -hmm. And if I compete with you, my personality, I will back up or start feeling really bad that I'm behind. Or, you know, it's just, it's, and it, your success, your results have virtually nothing to do with me. I mean, it's just like in sports, we get so depressed when our home team loses. And who cares? I mean, it means absolutely nothing to my livelihood, to my family structure, to, to anything. And, and yet we just get this intense involvement with other people's results. And we, we can, what I heard you say, we can really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We can appreciate their results without comparison. Yes. You know, there's yeah. an old adage, when somebody wins a lottery, your best friend, and you go, I'm as happy as I can be for you. <laughs> when you say that, you, you really know that, you know, how come not me? And so really putting that together, those three things, mm -hmm. is that foundational element to me of success in anything we do, whether it be in sports, in our avocation, in our businesses, in our relationships, how many times do we not put these principles into our relationships and then we're out of balance? We don't have that, that, that connection that way. So one of the things I wanna make sure that people understand that you do have this program for, I have a number of people in the HR realm. Uh, they would be great connections to make sure that you guys reach out to Lavana. So Lavana, what is the best way for people to connect to you? All right, there's, there's two ways. You could always email if you're looking at taking a step further at, at support at igniteyourshine.com. So support at igniteyourshine.com. And then on social media, it's almost always, if you want to do personally with me, it's at Lavana Roth, but I would also recommend at Ignite Your Shine, except on Instagram is at Ignite Your Shine now. It's pretty easy. Uh, and the thing that I do know about Lavana, she takes things very personal. You know, she's much like me. We respond to our emails. We, you know, it's not boilerplate. Uh, what you see here on this program is who she is, truly. This, this, this is her. Um, you know, the, the genuineness that comes out. So the, um, you know, the, the whole idea of Ignite Your Shine, is it truly, and I, it, this may sound really strange, is it truly available for anyone? So the framework works for anyone. We don't work with everyone right now. Um, you know, it's, it's a process of building it out. And every time I've tried to step away, education has pulled me back. It's obviously where my passion is and my heart is, but really my heart is with making a difference. And I want people to be confident in who they are and proud of who they are because you're here for a reason. And so, you know, it's, I don't have resources available for, you know, just anyone and everyone yet, but it's a process of what we're working towards. But as far as the shine framework, anyone can implement it, you know, have it posted somewhere, write down little ways that you're working through. What are my strengths? Am I still standing in my strengths? What are my passions, et cetera, and going through that framework and putting it in place because just on a daily basis, that alone can help lift you up and surround yourself with the people who are the inspiration that lift you up. You know, Gary, I'm thrilled to have you part of my life. It's been way too long since we've last talked, but I love having you part of my life. And you've been a very core uplifting piece for me, a solid rock and just embraced me. And I hopefully you feel that I've embraced you. And I just, I, I love our friendship and I know that I can turn to you for anything. So I want to thank you for that. You said nice words about me, but I want to thank you for that. <laughs> Because you, you have an amazingness about you. You're a line of greatness for sure. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We can have a love fest. Um, you know, and it, it was just a, a thought here. You know, normally we do have a give back part of the program. Would you be willing in the comments after we get done, just go on Facebook into the comment section and list the, the shine and the definition of each of the letters? And so for anyone that wasn't able to write them down or, you know, as you were explaining it, they can go back to that and start implementing the concepts today. W would that be okay? I wrote it down. It's on my to-do list. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Got it. So, you know, uh, we, I, I, I really strive to have these programs about 25 minutes, maybe a little bit more. And we're really coming up to that. Um, it's gone by way too fast. 
And the thing that I always do is allow my guests to have the final word, those parting words of wisdom, the, you know, whatever comes to your mind. And you know, we never script these calls. So whatever comes up in my belief is what was supposed to be shared and said to the audience that is checking in. So you get the final word. All right. Well, thanks for the surprise. <laughs> no, I do oh. this on purpose. Yes. No, I love it because I just want, like I said before, I want people to step into their line of greatness. And I'm going to go back to what I said that, you know, don't write off an entire day or even a year. You know, it, I know a lot of people are saying 2020, I'm over it. I'm done. I can't wait for the year to be done. But really the decision comes from you making the choice as to when the year is done, right? It's arbitrary number. And so when I say there's moments, some moments are longer than others, you know, but there's also very short moments. And so one of the quotes I gave during a high school graduation commencement speech, when I first time I ever shared my personal story, but I, when I, when I ended the story, I said to them, you know what, moments don't define you, allow them to refine you. And I, that's the choice we have. Uh, moments don't define us unless we allow them, right? But rather than defining us, Look at the lessons, the benefits, the takeaways, and use those to refine who you are and step into that greatness. You can't say it any better than that. So everyone, thank you for checking in, whether you're here live or if you're watching the replay. And again, my name is Gary Barnes, GaryBarnesInternational.com. Check out our uh, website. And uh, I, I'd love for you to reach out on social media if you haven't done that as well. Lavana, thank you so much for sharing today. I, she's in Florida, so I'm in Denver. We have snow. I shouldn't say that because I didn't make this evergreen. So yeah, we went from 94 degrees or you know, 94 to 28 in one day. But uh, you know, it, it's going away. We're going to get good weather again. But everyone, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And we'll see you on the next Give Back program. Bye-bye.